Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Today we're working on one of my own vehicles, but before we get to that, yes, I got a haircut, I shaved, I don't look homeless anymore. The wife's decided to keep me around, or at least she did decide to keep me around. This is another story. But um, yeah, it was great. Um, it was nice that that stuff's starting to open back up. Of course, with restrictions that, that we have to follow, but it is nice that the world is beginning, beginning to open back up around us here. So. I didn't have to bring a pillow and sleeping bag out to the shop, thankfully, but that could all change because we're working today on one of my own vehicles. This is a 2006 Volkswagen Jetta GLI, uh, two liter turbo. I'm getting the talk of can't stick any more money into that car. Why is that with Volkswagens? That's, that's the story. I mean, you just hear it so often from Volkswagen owners. <laughs> they seem to cause a little bit of grief. Um, uh, whatever the case. I bought this vehicle, a little bit of backstory. I bought this vehicle, uh, I don't know, four or five months ago, something like that, as a commuter vehicle. I have a 90 mile round trip uh, into work every day, so I bought this thing because it gets great fuel economy. Uh, I bought it with, um, with a, a sight window, let's call it, on the block. Somebody came and knocking and uh, punched right through the side of the block on here. Unfortunate for the previous owner, but I was able to pick up the car for a really good price and I threw in a used uh, junkyard engine that had roughly the same mileage of the vehicle, about 125,000 miles. Got it all together, and I've been driving it back and forth to work before uh, this whole lockdown with the uh, coronavirus started. Kind of nice, averaging over 35 miles per gallon on that long round trip. But, um, you know, since everything's happened, it, it did set a check engine light on, so I've been kind of ignoring it, <laughs> waiting for the opportunity to really dive into it, and that is now, uh, because this is gonna be a bit of a headache. So, today, as the title suggests, we are dealing with a P2293 trouble code, which means we're dealing with a fuel pressure regulator to performance code. Now, it's not very descriptive on what exactly that means, but the fuel pressure regulator performance code is going to be relating to the high pressure fuel system. Basically, the vehicle is asking for, desiring a certain amount of high pressure, and it's only achieving a certain amount of high pressure. We're dealing with a deviation between actual and desired fuel pressure, whatever that, that deviation may be. It could be uh, that we're overpressurizing the, the high pressure system, or we're underpressurizing. And that spec for this code, uh, just to make sure I quote it properly, is plus or minus 1.5 MPA. Now, I can't do that real quick off the top of my head. That's why I run out to trusty Google. And if we do the conversion, we're looking at roughly uh, 217 PSI, plus or minus. So our actual pressure that's being re reported by the high pressure fuel sensor is telling us that we're either above desired by 217 or below desired by 217. And now that has to occur for at least three seconds in order to set our trouble code on here. So. We have a problem where our pressure is either not high enough or too high. So first things first, let's verify it. I tried doing it here in the bay with the scan tool, was unable to get anything that lasted the full three seconds of duration. took this thing out on a test drive and immediately noticed a problem. As you can see, once we get this thing under load and we're actually able to maintain that load because it's stick shift, kind of nice that way, but once we're under load, you can actually see our fuel pressure deviation. We're well over that 217 PSI that this, uh, this thing is gonna code for. So that is an issue. So we verified the complaint. We definitely have a problem with this vehicle. Go figure, right? Um, for those of you that know this two liter GDI uh, turbo motor, they are problematic. <sighs> Sometimes we learn lessons the hard way, right? Um, so what do, what do we do next? Well, for me, I like to, and, and you guys should too, look for TSBs, right? I mean, that's a really good place to start. Audi Volkswagen knows that there's a problem with this engine. They've put a TSB out 
for it. Uh, here is the uh, TSB number. If you want to go out there, Google it, you can find the TSB yourself. But the long and short of it is our TSB right here is telling us they know there's a problem with the follower that rides on the camshaft to, to uh, basically power up our high pressure pump. So if you're not uh, familiar with GDI systems, basically we're going to use a mechanical pump like this one right here to increase our pressure from traditional fuel injection pressures to high pressure, 1500 to 2000 PSI or so on this vehicle. So we're going to take pressure out of the tank with a traditional style fuel pump. We're going to run it up to this guy. It's got an input right here. We're going to run it into this guy. And then we're going to run this, uh, this shaft right here, this actuator on a spring. We're going to run this on the cam shaft. There's a, there's a special lobe for this on the cam. And we're going to create that high pressure by, by squeezing with this pump. And we're going to output that into the rail. Uh, real quick note, for those of you that are diagnosing high pressure uh, fuel systems, or maybe even rich conditions on GDI engines, it's really cool with a GDI system that when you shut the vehicle off, it maintains that fuel rail pressure. So let's say we shut it off and there's 700 PSI sitting in the rail. Just like when we store fuel in a, in a gas can or something like that, if we heat or cool that fuel, we should see a pressure deviation one way or the other. Now typically on a GDI car, we're going to pull our fuel out of the fuel tank so it'll be cooler than what the engine is. So we're going to bring that up under the hood and we're going to set it in a metal fuel rail right next to all of that heat. So during a hot soak condition, if you're dealing with a rich condition and you want to know if your fuel injectors are leaking, watch that fuel rail pressure sensor. That'll tell you if you see a pressure increase, you should see it scale up during hot soak. If you see that, you're not leaking injector pressure. It works the same principle as a, as a natural vacuum leak detection on EVAP systems. Same type of principle as fuel uh, cools or, or increases in temperature, it expands or contracts. So just a quick side note on that. Uh, so back to our problem at hand. TSB related, uh, this thing is also a little bit noisy. You can hear a little bit of a, a clattering sound out of it when it's running, which makes sense. If we have wear in that shaft or in that, that, that bucket, that follower that's on there, if there's wear on that, we've now increased our, our uh, area between those two surfaces and that could definitely lead to noise. Also in the, the TSB it mentions, you know, in, in Google, if you Google this problem, it mentions an issue with camshafts as well. If we wear the camshaft itself, we're going to see the same problem. So rip out the high pressure pump and inspect it, right? Well, not, not so fast. It's possible we could have another problem that's not high pressure pump related, okay? We don't want to go diving into that quite yet. If we starve the high pressure fuel pump of fuel itself, we're not gonna be able to hit our desired number. So if we have a problem on the low pressure side, low pressure fuel pump, restriction in the line, anything that's gonna restrict our fuel, making it to the high pressure fuel pump itself could cause our problem. So we wanna verify that first. I threw a gauge on here, which is really nice. They have a nice Schrader valve right under the hood right here. Uh, so you just hook your gauge, thread it right into there. And uh, I tried to look at it in, in the bay here, wasn't really able to get accurate results. So I took the car out on a test drive, take a look. You can see my fuel pressure looks pretty good. And just so you know, the spec on there is uh, 3.5 to 5 bar. Uh, according to trusty Google, 3.5 bar is equivalent to about 50 PSI, 51 if you want to round. And uh, 5 bar brings you to um, about 72.5 PSI. So 50 to 72 PSI is what we're looking for on low pressure, and that's perfect. We saw that um, on, our, uh, on our low pressure side. We are feeding our pump with enough pressure and volume to squeeze it enough to make our, our high enough pressure. So we don't have a low side delivery problem. You want to verify that first before you go tearing into the high pressure side. So looks like we have to pull the high pressure pump out, but I like to have a little bit more data than that. So you can see here that I've hooked up the lab scope. I wasn't able to find any sort of definitive information of what it is that we're looking for. So this is going to be a little bit of trial and error. I have the lab scope voltage probes hooked into either side of our connector right here on top of the high pressure pump. And then I also have a current clamp on there. So we're going to record three channels 
at, uh, at idle, warm idle, 3000 RPM, and then kind of like a wide open hit just in the service bay in, in neutral here. We're not gonna, we're not gonna mess with this thing under load on, on the highway with the scope and everything. Right now we're just trying to capture a little bit of data so that we can compare it to the, the other pump, uh, which is the pump that actually came out of the original motor, which I'm really, really glad that I hung on to because fingers crossed um, this one's gonna be okay because this pump looks really good. The bucket, the follower on there looks really good. So. Fingers crossed, it's only gonna be this, uh, this pump and the, and the bucket that's on here, the follower that's on here. Um, so before I go taking this thing apart, I just wanna, to sh I'm, I'm not gonna show you guys taking it apart or depressurizing the high pressure fuel system because it is and can be incredibly dangerous. I don't want anybody to get hurt when they're trying to follow along in this video. If you're looking to do this yourself, please reach out to your local shop Maybe reach out to your local Volkswagen Audi dealer and find out if you can get the printed service procedure for depressurizing this system. I'm not gonna share it. And I'm gonna ask all you guys out there who say this is a very easy process, I'm gonna ask you not to share it in the comments as well. I just don't want anybody to uh, take and uh, misread the information or whatever it might be, um, or try to tackle this at home without the proper tools or w whatever it might be. I don't want anybody getting hurt. So please, guys, please just respect that and don't, don't share in the comments section how to do it. I just, I really don't want anybody to get hurt. And I agree, this process on this one is incredibly easy. There's not a lot to it. I just don't want to hear a story of somebody getting hurt by depressurizing their system wrong while working on a vehicle that they saw from our video, okay? Just please respect that. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this system depressurized, but before I do, I'm gonna capture everything with the lab scope so we have some before and after testing and then, um, I'll get this pump off and we'll, we'll do some quick inspection on it, all right? I will be right back. And voila, the uh, high pressure fuel pump is in my hand. I, I hope you guys can understand why I didn't wanna show this process of pulling it out of the engine here. Um, I, I don't like to do that. I like to show you guys step by step of what I do or at least give you a time lapse of me pulling it out, but I just, I really don't want anybody to get hurt. So high pressure fuel pump out of this vehicle. There's definite wear on our follower for the camshaft here. So this is gonna ride between the pump itself and the camshaft. There's definite wear on this thing. Um, this could be our problem, but as we take a look at the camshaft here, as we look through this hole, I'll show you guys, here's a close up picture. Uh, I'm not too, too sure how that camshaft is looking. It's really hard to judge through there, but because this is a relatively easy high pressure fuel pump and this is my own vehicle, and I have the high pressure fuel pump out of the original engine that was in this car, I think I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna throw this one in and retest and see what happens. Um, because anything, if it's not that high pressure fuel pump, if that doesn't fix it, I'm gonna be looking at a cam issue. I'm gonna be doing some massive, massive teardown that I really don't wanna do. So I'm gonna say fingers crossed, judging by the wear on this guy, that our high pressure fuel pump uh, with a, a good follower fixes it. I don't, I don't know, we'll see. Um, I wish there was a definitive answer. And maybe the data that we captured on the original pump and then we'll capture data on the new original motors pump that's put in here. Uh, maybe that data, there'll be some differences and we'll be able to, to uh, figure something out from that. There's really not a lot of information out there on that, on that data itself, so we'll kind of Kind of take a look at that, but that's not going to happen until part two. Um, you guys can tell this is this is part one. Uh, part two is going to come out next week, so a week from today, uh, next week Thursday. And in part two, we are going to share the results of the test drive of that uh, new original motor pump installed. Share the results of that. Share some data from the test drive with that, and then also we're going to take a look at the data that was captured with the lab scope itself and see if we are uh, job well done, cars fixed, and I'm not gonna wanna drive it into the lake, or um, job not fixed, and I'm probably gonna wanna drive this thing off a cliff or into a lake or whatever the case, but I'm fingers crossed that the high pressure pump fixes it and, I, and it doesn't need a camshaft, but I'm a, little, uh, I'm a little concerned. But I guess we're not gonna find out until part two next week. Before you guys go, T-shirt giveaway time. We have T-shirts again, and, and we're going to try and do it through this new Premiere platform. Um, 
just because I'm still working from home, it's hard to go live from home. So, GoTech t-shirts, guys. They say GoTech in the logo on the front, and and for those of you who, is, who have always been asking for them, we also have pocketed shirts. Unfortunately, I don't have any of those at home with me right now, but they have a pocket on the front, and then on the back of the non-pocketed shirt, you're gonna see this. And here's a picture of the back of the pocketed shirt itself. So, rules are gonna be the same as it, as it was during the live broadcast. You have until midnight tonight. Today is June, uh, June 4th, and um, you have until midnight tonight of June 4th, 2020, to email me in the answer to this question the first five correct responses with a little bit of explanation with them. You can't just give me technician A, technician B, both or neither. I want some explanation along with it. I want you to basically, I don't know, like the old math teacher used to say, show me your work. Um, I want some explanation with it. The first five to get it correct will win a free GoTech t-shirt shipped to you. Now, for those of you who have been watching for a long time and you have a closet full of our other branded t-shirts, all of that is wiped out, clean slate right now. You are welcome to win today if you uh, don't have a GoTech t-shirt, which none of you do currently. So awesome, I, let's get right to the question. Question is, two techs are discussing GDI, gasoline direct injected engines. Technician A says that under normal operation, uh, key on engine off, fuel rail pressure will increase during a hot soak. Technician B says excessive cam to high pressure fuel pump clearance will result in higher fuel pressure. Who's correct? Tech A, Tech B, both or neither. And again, you have until 12 p.m. Central Time tonight to shoot me off that email. My email address is right here. Shoot me off that email with the correct answer and then show me your work. Give me some explanation behind it. All right, the best of luck to you guys, to the, to the top five winners. Congratulations in advance. Um, I really hope you guys are going to enjoy these enjoy these t-shirts. So again, this was just part one. Part two next week, plan on joining me to uh, discuss the results of the high pressure fuel pump install and then um, the data, we're going we're gonna to really dive deep into that lab scope data and take a look. That's going to be part two. So I will see you guys next week. Thank you again for joining me today. If you enjoyed the video today, please smash that thumbs up button. Show us that you're, you're loving what we're doing. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you click the little bell icon down there, you will get a notification next week, Thursday, when we air the next uh, part two of, of this series here. So again, thank you for joining me, guys. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, everyone. And as always, happy wrenching. Thank you.